Welcome to the Executive Show. Nothing easy. An inside look at the Warriors front office. Hey, can somebody give Bob some credit? With President of Basketball Operations and GM, Bob Myers, on 95.7 The Game. Brought to you by Free Spirits, non-alcoholic spirits for amazing cocktails that keep you in the game. Available at drinkfreespirits.com. Bob Myers. GM and president of basketball operations of the Dakota State Warriors. He joins us every other Tuesday here on the Morning Roast at 8.30 in the morning. Good morning, Bob. First of all, I guess we got to start with what's happening in Indianapolis. I guess the rest of the squad is en route to New York City. Uh, man, what I mean, what happened? I mean, we'll get to catalytic uh, converters in just a second here. But, man, was there any thought about maybe just staying in Indianapolis and telling the NBA, you know what, you can shove it. We're playing this game Wednesday. We're not forcing our players to do this. Oh, man. We don't make these rules. But, yeah, I'm, I'm in New York already. They're, um, the team is landing pretty soon. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, they uh, they don't let you do that, Bonte. We, I know. If we did, we would, we would ask or, or try to get that done. But um, in these situations – you have to wait around, which the team did in Indianapolis, to see if they can get you a plane, right? Which they couldn't, and then eventually we just said, you know, the coaches and players, you can't make them wait forever. So they went back to the hotel, and they have a plane. They're on the plane now. And we land. It's not a, it's not what you exactly want uh, playing the day of travel. But I was talking to Steve last night. And he goes, "Hey, he goes, this is what this is what we used to do, you know." I, I you, but we flew United commercial, so. If I got Jerry West on the phone, he'd tell me they play back to back to backs and they flew and in coach and, right. and the whole thing. So modern day problem, but um, they'll be here and the game's going to happen. It'll be fun. How dangerous is it for them to play today? Flying on the day of, I know the NBA, NBA has eliminated this. They've eliminated four games at five nights. Trust me, Bob, we've heard all the stories of Jim Barnett playing 12 games at 12 nights, taking the Greyhounds all over the state, all over the country. How dangerous is it? Dangerous is it though to see this team play today on the day of flying to New York City? Well, you know, dangerous is a, t- is a strong word. I, I, I would say if we felt it was, we wouldn't play anybody. Mm. But it's um, you know, you're not you don't have the same recovery. I mean, you know, you, you guys perform places. You don't you're not quite in your in your best um, physical condition when you land on a plane and, and then go right to something. But our trainers are great. Our medical staff's great. They'll get the guys as ready as you can be. Back to backs by themselves are difficult. Um, and, and guys know how to take care of their bodies. If, if somebody really isn't feeling well, um, they won't play. But, but, but I know they're all motivated, and um, certainly the guy that you want to see play is playing on playing. So it should be a pretty fun night in, in New York City with, uh, with, with what's on the line. Hey, Bob, how poetic is it that he's going to break the, the record? Because I, I want to ask you about the record weighing on everybody, but Draymond's kind of already talked about it subconsciously, consciously, and, and all that. But what about the, the poetic, I don't know, the symmetry of him being able to break the record at Madison Square Garden? It seems really cool. Yeah, I mean, we could talk about that or the Cadillac converters. Um, we, were, we, we can do the poetry of Curry breaking the all-time three-point record. Um <laughs> Look, it's you know, it's um, it is pretty cool that it's in New York. I mean, th- we play one time a year in the Garden, and I-, I don't know if you guys have been to a game there. Um, it's it's got all the care. It reeks of character in a good way. I mean, iconic building, uh, good fans, New York City. Um, good for him that he gets to do it on a big stage. I assume he'll hit a couple. I I, I know I've seen the comments in Draymond. And Steve has said, and even Steph to some degree, I, I, I think people are trying to walk that line of is is the team playing differently? And I, someone said it well. I don't know if it was Steve or so. I don't know who said it, but unconsciously, I'd say yes. You know, consciously, no. Nobody's really trying to play differently. I would imagine, including Steph. But yeah, it's in the conscious of people. Uh, you know, and and it's you know we haven't played our best. Um, and so hopefully for all of us, we, we get it behind him uh, and we celebrate it. And uh, the fact that it, he needs two kind of makes it feel maybe more attainable. I, I don't know the last game right. he didn't hit two. Uh, so it should be should be a wonderful uh, and, and really kind of electric crowd. Yeah, if Coach Tibbs decides to double Steph all day long like that one college did against Davison with Steph was there, then maybe he won't get the record. But as you mentioned, Bob, this should, be, should happen fairly quickly. And when it does happen, what's going to go through your mind when it does happen and he achieves this great feat? 
That's a good question. Um, you know, I when I got hired, um, you know, I didn't we didn't draft Steph it was Larry Riley, Don Nelson. Um, and I remember my first interactions with him and he really you know, the ankle was a big deal. I I'm sure you guys as fans mm-hmm. remember. I remember kind of being around him and when we were trying to figure all that out and thinking that uh this guy deserves better. I mean, that was a, that was a real thing for a while. He was spraining his ankle, throwing an outlet pass, and 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 just dribbling. So, you know, it, just me sitting there personally thinking this isn't right. I mean, this guy's too good to not be playing basketball for himself, for for the world, for our, for our community, for our Warriors fans, and to see him do what he's done in in the way he's done it. You know, we so just the fact that he didn't come in. I know he had a lot of fanfare because of what he did at Davidson and maybe because of Dell, but he wasn't, you know, people look back and say, I knew it. I'm not sure a lot of people knew this um, and, and could have projected this, but he's kind of done it each year. He's just gotten a little bit better and, and proven more people wrong. And, and now it's grown into this culmination of tonight in New York city. And I, I tell people that want to listen um, wh- what I see in him that maybe others don't is his work. And it's, you know, people think he just shows up and shoots threes. I mean, the guy works as hard as anybody in their profession. And not just physically, but mentally. Um, every day, I mean, when he travels and he's doing things, he's doing a commercial, his trainers are there. He's got a commitment to his craft. He likes the work. And when you like your work and you're that talented, you get it, and you get on a big stage, great things can happen. And, and the other thing is his, his confidence never wavered. Um, athletes sometimes, you know, either people – and they get insecure and up and down. He just, he maintains that. And so for me, um, kind of getting to know him, Bonte, as a guy too, he's, you know, he's tremendous. Just a great person. Um, not, not, not a lot of celebrities, I would say, or famous people you meet, you get disappointed, to be honest. Right. So I thought this guy was a nicer, this gal was nicer than, it's too bad. You know, with him, you, you're, He's better than you think. Yep. The people listening, it's not. There's no. <laughs> there's no kind of du- duplicity to this guy. He's what you see, and, and even better in person. Yeah, I think the line is something to the effect of never meet your heroes, they always let you down. And, and nine times out of ten, they're right about that. But when you meet Bob Myers in person, he really is that good of a dude. So we got Bob Myers with us, GM of the Golden State Warriors. Yes, I'm kissing get up the on violin, you Bob. Know get I the am. violin. You know, I said what hey, I'm doing. You know, real quick, Bob. You know what? Shaq's got to throw this out there since we're here. Guru sitting courtside at your seats, right? And he dropped the ball and dropped his phone or whatnot. I saw Guru that night, and I was like, man, Shasky. You know, Guru had the Bob Meyer specials last night, man. And Shasky goes, good for him. He got to see the Orlando Magic. I said, oh, that's not right. It was a joke. I said, that's not right. I said, you telling me you wouldn't go see the G League Unite courtside if they were playing the Warriors? I mean, Shasky here, man, the arrogance. I would, I would. Gets morning drive now, Bob, and now he's, you know, thumbing up his nose here at Guru for watching the Magic courtside. Jackie, is that true? You do that? No, of course not. I actually <laughs> spent my own money. I saw you at the game. I took my wife. We had a great time on Friday night against the Suns. I, I just have. A I know. You know, it's funny. I, I gotta get you guys down there. I don't know if you've ever sat on the floor of a game. It's um, it's the best thing to do in sports, short of like a ringside seat if you like boxing. Yeah. Um, and that's not because I'm in basketball. Pick a better, I guess, behind home plate. But I still think a floor seat. Football's different, but um, a floor seat to a basketball game is. It's different. It's yeah. a different experience. Yeah, but I'll have to wait for what a good game for you, Chef. <laughs> no, that's not yeah, it. You got to wait for the Lakers. You got to wait for the Harlem Globetrotters. You got to wait for the '97 Bulls or the '96 no, Bulls. They won 72 here. games for Chef. Get out of here! Hey, look, I want to get into Jordan Poole, Bob, because we've worried so much about the young guys and and these guys taking ascensions and next step forward. And I'm just watching Jordan Poole come into his own. And it's not just the shooting because the shooting is one aspect. The IQ in the half court to set up for others. He's taken quantum leaps forward in terms of decision making and I'm just I'm blown away last night he had multiple plays where he set up for others in the half court when things were getting really constipated what what's it been like behind the scenes to kind of work with Jordan Poole and see him come into his own on the grand stage he was he's younger than than Chris Duarte who's a rookie for for the Pacers last night yeah no, that's good. You recognize it. I mean, he is young, and he was drafted pretty young. And I think what you're seeing with him is, you know, certainly his first year, 
it was a lot of ups and downs. Um, but if you watch, I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm biased, but you do see some talent there, uh, even, in, even when he struggles. And he's finding ways to, instead of, you know, two bad things and then one good thing, he's, he's turned that on his head where it's you know, three good plays, one, mm. one bad play, or, or four good plays, one bad play. But his passing, um, his pick-and-roll numbers, I mean, I, I know you guys don't dive into the analytics, but his efficiency in the pick-and-roll is really high. Uh, which which tells you he can make decisions, whether it's scoring or passing. But his passing has always been a little underrated. I think people are starting to see that part of it. And we don't run a traditional really pick-and-roll offense because of Steph. So the interesting thing for him will be what we would maybe like to see at, at times is when James gets back is, is Jordan and James in the pick-and-roll because we think that can be a really good weapon when things get stuck. Um and we do get you know slowing down in the half court because the half court execution. If you're going to win in the playoffs, uh, that you have to have that um, to win, and you got to have things that that um, give you an advantage. And Jordan in the pick and roll, you're right. It's it's a good observation. He's he's really become much better. And, and the job of a point guard is to get a good shot for your team. That's mm-hmm. um, so why guys like Chris Paul are so good. And, and guys, it's not necessarily. Some nights you're going to miss shots, but if you can get a good shot every possession in the half court or as often as possible, you're likely going to put yourself in a good position to win the game. Bob Myers, GM of the Golden State Warriors, also president of basketball operations here on the Morning Rose for the executive show that we have every Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. here on 95.7 The Game. Look, we'll get to the obligatory Clay Thompson question in just a second, but Kevon Looney, I mean, we were discussing him earlier, Bob Shasky and I, where – he doesn't get any headlines. Mm-mm. Nobody talks about him. Heck, he's a scapegoat for a lot of things that happens wrong with the Dakota State Warriors, but he's just consistent. He plays night in, night out, gives you everything he has. I thought he battled Embiid hard Saturday night. And then last night with the game-winning flip shot, 14 points, 8 rebounds. Looney's just constant. And you can trace back the championship days where Looney was a factor here. The guy just plays, man. And what a story for Kevon Looney after his career got off to such a rocky start due to the hips. Yeah, he's he may be. Well, he's 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 certainly one of the most respected guys in the locker room, and also liked because, um, you know, Steve loves him. He's no maintenance. You know, he, Steve can play him bigger minutes. He cannot play him. He can play him shorter minutes. Um, Kavon's a pro, and that's a compliment to give a player. And he's not he's not thirty five either, but he's steady. And you need guys like that. You need guys that. Um, you know, nights where things aren't going great, he fills in and he does all the dirty work, like you said. He, he's never going to get the headlines. He did a great job on Embiid the other night. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and, you know, that's not easy either. But, you know, because he's not maybe flashy and, uh, you know, he's the hard hat, lunch pail guy. But but you need those guys. And and he's smart. I mean, he's, his brain is defensively and offensively. He knows how to play in our system. He's only played with us. He's only ever played for our team. He's played in NBA Finals games. Um He's a big part of what we are, uh, and, and he doesn't get talked about a ton because there's some other headliners on the team that certainly deserve attention too. But they like him. Um, it's you know when you're playing on a team with champions, and he's one of them. Um, you know it's not easy to gain the respect of guys that have been there in the playoffs and played deep mm-hmm. into it, like some of our guys have, like uh, Steph, Draymond, and Kavan. But that gives you confidence, and I think Kavan's played in some big games, and so he gives him confidence, gives his teammates confidence. Certainly Kerr, he's one of Kerr's favorite players, like hands down. Steve uh, Steve loves Kavon, and and rightly so. He's, 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 any coach would love Kavon, so he was, he was big last night, and he doesn't play like that. We lose the game. Yeah, I mean, he sets screens, and everyone brings that up, but he's a coach's dream because he'll block a guy out, and he might not clear the rebound, but it's because of him that the Warriors did get the rebound because he clears his man out. Draymond's fantastic at that as well. Um, James Wiseman, where's he at uh, physically right now? Where, where's Clay Thompson at right now? I know we're getting closer and closer. Maybe you want to break something and let people know, <laughs> you know? We got the Curry thing tonight, yo. Let's just let, let, we got enough action coming. <laughs> Bob, we only have three listeners. Enough. Bob, we only have three listeners. Nobody would. Know. Okay, all right. <laughs> uh, nobody would care. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, Clay's playing. Uh, no. Um, so we don't know. I mean, we don't know. Okay. They, uh, they're playing down. At, they're in Santa Cruz, and uh, they're they're practicing right now. Um, both doing fine. Clay's doing scrimmaging, waiting to see when James can do the five on five. But no, nothing indicating that anything's. Going the wrong direction, all all is well. Um, 
I'm excited for it to happen, too. Uh, we haven't even decided internally when it'll be. Um, right. We have to talk to Rick and Clay. And, but the good news is, you know, there's a light. If you're in this tunnel, it's been a long tunnel for Clay. You can see this yep. light. And, you know, as close as we get, I, I was so, you know, like you guys, I want to see him play so bad. Not, yeah. Well, for our team, for many reasons, um, for him. But as it gets closer... I kind of get more patient. I don't, I don't, this is just me personally because I know it's coming. Right. And I've seen him scrimmage. Looks really good. Um, I've seen him build endurance. You know, I've seen him from two weeks ago or three weeks ago to a few days ago. And I see him getting better, getting stronger. And I see the purpose of all this. And um, when he gets back, we need that. You know, I mean, we talk about the kind of emotion of it and the feel good part of Clay coming back, but. If you want to talk kind of about our team and what he means to our team, you see us in these lulls. We hope um, Clay Thompson can fill some of that void. That's what he's always done for this team. Right. And so to have him, I mean, if, 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 if we were at the trade deadline, you say, what do you need? I say, we need some scoring, you know, in the half court. We need, we need, we need a 6-7 right. kind of assassin from three. I mean, there, here he is. So it's, it's great, and I, I, I really can't wait. It's, it's yeah. not too far away. How's James Wiseman looking, and what's the ideal situa- for, situation for him, Bob, when he does come back? Um, you know, the ideal situation will be, you know, how he looks when he's doing the five-on-five, five, how we feel he's ready. Um, again, same thing as Clay. That We haven't had that vertical lob threat the whole year. Uh, but he's down there, and, and we're, you know, this isn't something where you, you'd make a 20-year-old get back before his body's telling him he should. And so we're, we're being patient with it, just, just like Clay. And, taking the long view and really, you know, for both of them, we think we're going to need those guys if we want to accomplish, you know, good things in the playoffs. And so what, what he does, and you, you guys know this, is it's, it's a completely different element. We don't have what he brings. Yeah, uh, We'll probably simplify it for him. I know a lot of people watched last year um, like you guys did, and it was kind of the whole season was, was trying to figure out who we were personnel-wise, team-wise. And and, I, and it was too bad for him because right before he got hurt, I think he was actually trending in a good direction. We were trying to simplify some stuff, but I think when he comes back, Steve's mentioned as if we that it'll it'll be a simpler type of role, and, and I don't mean simpler as bad, but um, some of the things we really need, which is that vertical vertical threat and and someone at the rim to protect the rim, and and uh, we hope he's can do all those things. We think he can. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to him. I can't wait for Clay Thompson. I was in the gym Sunday night, and kid took a three pointer, and I yelled at him. I said, "Mikey Guinasso, you are not Clay Thompson." And all the the fans started laughing. All the parents, everybody's waiting for Clay Thompson to come back. It got a good chuckle from him. But I had a little chuckle from you earlier on on catalytic converters. So, Bob, I have two questions, simple and easy. Do you park your vehicle outside consistently? And have you ever been broken into? Did you know what a catalytic converter was? Because Bonte and I had no idea what they were. So, yeah. Yes, twice. And isn't it sad that, that I live in San Francisco. I think you guys, I know, Joe, you grew up. or I don't know if you guys live in the city. I do. Now. Still live here. Okay, so, I mean, t- t- ask me someone in the city who hasn't <laughs> had their car broken. That's the sad part. Yes. Um, one time I was taking the kid. The, the, the saddest one was I took my kids to Lion King. I have three daughters. Oh, nice. And we had picked up some gingerbread houses on our way, and I parked down, I think it was near Golden Gate and, like, Golf going down in that oh, area. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I know exactly Western where it is. is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. And I parked over there, and, you know, middle of the day, right? Not night. And, um, like, a 1 o'clock show, come back, just mess, you know, as you know, shattered oh. glass everywhere. And my daughters look at me, and they're, they're young. This doesn't fire and their gingerbread houses are, you know, totally ruined in the back. The guy just stepped on them, and and there's glass all over it. And they go, "Daddy, why would what happen?" And I'm just kind of trying to explain the whole thing to them. Um, I went to the police station, and you know, it's not there. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not blaming anybody, but the guy was kind of like, "Don't park. Don't. It's not a good place to park your car." <laughs> I mean, and I was the, like, it's the middle of the day. Right. <laughs> but again, I, I, you know, and, and then and then on another random night in my house, um, yeah. You know, I don't, I don't even know what to say. I, I didn't. My Cadillac converter did not get stolen. Like, <laughs> that's, that's good. I, that's, that's good. I kept the Cadillac converter, uh, but but I, you know, I. 
I don't know. You know, it's it's a pain, man. You get you've had it happen to you, Joe. Oh my god! It's yeah. the glass in between the seats yeah. for months yeah. later. Months later, you get it cleaned, you get everything oh. changed out. It's expensive, and then for months you're finding little shards of glass. Right. Oh, it's the worst. I know. And, and I didn't have anything. You know, I don't know. I mean, I think everybody who lives in the city now knows. Yeah, you know, nothing in the car. Right. There was well, nothing in the car. You know, so 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 you're doing everything you can. I mean, it's. Um, <laughs> I, Bob, but I, Bob, you are a guy. You, I'll, I'll finish with this. It doesn't, it's not, the, well, the money's the money. The money's a lot of money, like you said. Right. And the inconvenience, it takes away your sense of kind of... Um, Safety. I don't know, security, right? Yeah. Yes, now, yep. I'm now with I you. Think wherever I park my car, I, I go back, I still do this, and I'm not some... You know, I go back to my car. It's not, a lot of times I wonder, I wonder if my car got broken into. Yeah. That's what it takes from you. I do yeah. the look on the ground. No I do the look as yeah. I'm walking toward, like, right. oh, is the glass on the ground or yeah. not? And All I'm like, time. yes, yes. Well, it's well, still there. Well, it's true intact. story. I'm yeah. glad Bob, one night Bob did have where he left his championship ring in his car no. overnight, and that didn't get stolen. So that was, thank Whoa. thankfully, Bob's oh, yeah, yeah, Dawson right. Bullocks. That Remember that, bad. Bob? Yeah. Well, I got away with it one time. That would have been a rough one. <laughs> that would have been a rough one. <laughs> That would have been a, yeah, that, that, that I got lucky, though. You figure you can make one mistake in thousands of nights in the city. You might leave up one night and I get broken into. But, uh, yeah, fellas, um, I don't have my car here in New York, so maybe we'll walk to the game. No, 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 no. So it's going to be fun. I'm excited for tonight. Yeah, we are. I, I see a lot of games and yeah. so do you guys. and I think I'll remember this one. Yeah, yeah tell no Joe doubt. To pick up the tab tonight after you guys party this one out. All right? You know, you go pick up that tab. The high end oh, I stuff. Joe, I think my boss is going to pick up whatever. He, he's Joe's here. He's, he's yeah. He's, he's going to pick up whatever tabs are happening. I love oh, it. It's going to be a lot of fun. The I cheapest ticket to get into the garden tonight four hundred and fifty dollars. Bob, Woo! that's for some nosebleeds. This should be historic on a team that wishes they could have drafted Stephen Curry. Oh my goodness! They were picking number eight. The Warriors are picking number seven to draft Steph Curry, and the rest is history. Should be a fun night, Bob. We thank you so much Thanks, for joining buddy. us. We'll talk to you soon. All right, guys. Thanks for having me.